I've been asked to talk about the home study assessment. You may have heard this being referred to as the Form F assessment as well, so it can be used, um, both terms can be used. Um, as we've just heard about PrEP groups, a home study assessment will only begin once prospective adopters have attended preparation classes and completed an application form. This application form must be received and accepted by the adoption agency. Um, Within the prospective adopters application form, you already have agreed to checks and references being carried out. So this will include medical information, enhanced disclosures and references. And we'll go into a wee bit more detail about that. The home study assessment tends to be the longest part of the adoption assessment journey. Um, and good practice would indicate that this should take place within about six months. Now, I always try not to talk in, time, in terms of time, but it is probably important for yourselves to understand what good pra practice would indicate. And six months does seem about right. However, if there are other members of your family, if you have birth children, or maybe there's other children, stepchildren, if you have ex-partners or you've been married before, um, this can obviously impact the length of time. Similarly, if there's medical issues, so if there's issues around your health or maybe issues around their, your disclosures, this again may take a wee bit extra time. But really, you shouldn't be looking at much longer than eight to 12 months. You know, And if it does take longer than that, you need to start asking questions. Um, so misconceptions about the home study assessment. Um, I googled a few things. Um, it's always quite good to do that because you're so entrenched, I suppose, when you work in this type of job that you just assume that people know what it's about. Um, people, it was a, mostly American websites, but people talked about it being invasive, intrusive, that you were judged and that there was a very clear power imbalance. And I suppose to a certain extent, some of these could um, um, be true, but in reality, the way that I look at it is it depends on how you want to be to present yourself. I think the home study assessment is really should be led by yourselves and that you should be truly involved in this um, and that you should be contributing because we have no information about you. You make up the story of your life um, and obviously we have to back it up with evidence and that's really, really important through your references and through information, through work references and stuff like that. But actually, this is your assessment. So it depends, I mean, it is, and the other part about it is it's, it's focused on finding the right home for a child. It's an adoption agency's duty to protect our children. Within St Margaret's, um, you would have already have met the social workers within the team and you would hope that in other adoption agencies that would be the case. So you might have already began to have a sort of relationship before you start the home study assessment. But truly, an honest and trusting relationship with your worker should ensure a journey of reflection and enlightenment. And the assessment, as I said, should be led by you. This, however, requires honesty and integrity. Um, the assessment process has two main functions. First of all, to confirm or to find evidence that you truly understand the adoption, adoption process and the issues relating to adoption. And secondly, to give and help and further explore the skills, resources, understanding, availability and the emotional resilience that is required to provide a stable and loving home to an adopted child. You'll already have started your journey because somebody will have been out to visit you and then you've been to preparation classes. By the time you make the decision to move on to your home study assessment, you should have a good understanding about what adoption, first of all, you can bring to the adoption journey, but also what you're expecting back. However, it is still an assessment, so at any time if you feel that either this is not what you basically signed up for, or possibly that the adoption agency feel that this is not right for you, then there are plenty of opportunities for you to have a chat about that. So how does it happen? Um, so meetings take place between yourself and your allocated social worker. If you are part of a couple, this will include individual meetings. So the social worker will want to meet with you individually and they want to meet with you as a couple. If you have children, they want to meet with the children as well. Um, these will take place in your home or in your adoption agency's office. Family members such as children within the family and your wider family network will be involved and the social worker will want to meet with your children, as I've said. Um, the process <coughs> is designed to help the agency really truly and get a rounded picture of you and your family. Um, as qualified social workers who undertake the assessment, they have a very clear responsibility and duty. They must evidence these core competences and they must also link it to the GERFEC agenda, which is getting it right for every child. So we are expecting you to evidence, um, provide evidence that you have experience of caring for children, providing a safe and caring environment, work as part of a team. 
you understand that adoption is a lifelong process and you can talk about your own development, so your own journey, what you've learned, what you plan on learning, what you still need to learn. <coughs> so what will we ask you about? Well, we'll ask you lots and lots of things, but some of them will be about your childhood and how you were parented, and people want to know what that's about. And I suppose what we know and research tells us is that the way that you were parented will impact on the way that you then go on to parent. So basically, we'll turn into our mums and dads. Um, but no, no, I mean, I think everybody, some people who have had possibly maybe difficult pasts find this quite a scary prospect. And actually, what we're saying is we're not expecting you all to have perfect childhoods. What we're expecting you to do is be able to reflect on that journey and evidence to us how you've managed to move on, the resilience that, you've, um, that you have, the coping strategies and the coping mechanisms. For people who have had perfect childhoods, actually, and, and perfect lives, how do we evidence that they're going to cope with the stresses and strains of adoption? That's really, really important. Your motivation to adopt and your journey to adoption, that's really, really important as well. We need to understand why you've made this decision, and really if that decision is right for you, for your partner, and for the child, most importantly. Some people come to adoption through um, uh, because they're unable to have their own children, and that obviously um, is, is the majority of people that, that, that decide to adopt, and that's absolutely fine. But you may be asked to evidence your understanding of um, uh, caring for a birth child and the transition that's required to really care for an adopted child. So if you have a birth child, then that's great, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can care for an adopted child, and I think that's really key. Um, some of the other things we're going to ask you about is major life events, significant relationships, your own identity, your support networks, and I know that was already talked about, um, and what you think you can cope with, which is really, really important. Within adoption, we're always speaking to you about how children who have had poor early experiences really require support. And your understanding will be that the children who are placed for adoption um, have likely been in care. They'll have been in care, so therefore they have been impacted by trauma and abuse. But we don't want to place a child that you can't cope with their behaviour. So although we do want you to stretch and we want you to consider all um, children, at the end of the day, you need to be realistic about your expectations and we need, be, need to be realistic as well. So we're asking you not to think about whatever the perfect child is. We're asking you to think about the impact of early, poor early experiences, but you also have to think about your own skills, your own knowledge and your limits as well. Okay, so our expectations. And I've just put a few things up here, and I'll just talk about a, a, a couple of um, expectations that we have in the home study assessment. And the first and foremost, it's just be open and honest. If we're up front with each other, um, and we know that m many issues can be overcome, the biggest problems that we've had in the past have been when information has been withheld or is inaccurate. If you're in doubt, check it out. Uh, your worker should be flexible and attempt to arrange visits at a mutually suitable time. So this can involve okay, occasional evening visits. Again, that flexibility and commitment and dedication is important as well. So it's important that it comes from you know, both sides. Um, an enhanced disclosure check will be completed, and I've already spoken about that. You need to let us know in advance if you think that something might come up. You come up. Um, again, the major difficulties occur when people are not up front. The medical assessment is really important, and it will come from your own GP. If you have um, a diagnosis or you have specialists involved, um, maybe if you've got a certain medical condition, then it's important that you let us know about that, um, and we'll probably get our medical advisor to contact your specialist. But please note, this includes mental health problems as well. So we're not just talking about physical ailments or physical disabilities, we're also talking about issues that you may have had in the past with regards to stress, depression and anxiety. Again, honesty is the best policy. We'll undertake six personal references. We often say that, um, and we've talked a wee bit about supports, and actually we know that a lot of your supports will come from your family, and people are often keen to give six family references. But it's important for us to hear about your friends as well, particularly friends that may have children, so that's great if we can do that. So what we would suggest is that you have three family references and three personal references. Maybe somebody that's known you through your childhood, or if there's both of you, um, somebody that's known you through your childhood right up to the, the, who you are now. And if there's anybody within those references that get other children that you see, then that's absolutely great as well. Um, 
I've, I've spoken a wee bit about the birth of children and um, we'll ask for a reference for your current employer as well. Smoking, unfortunately, is a no-no and I suppose if you smoke, you have to stop, you know, and I'm pretty sure that most people will know that. But again, if you're open and honest about it and if you're working towards a plan, then that's absolutely brilliant. Um, BMI can be a bit of an issue as well, and it's a kind of ongoing issue with regards to adoption. There is a clear expectation that you are below a certain um, level, and that varies from adoption agency to adoption agency. My personal opinion is it's very much about what else you can bring, and it's not just about um, your size, but I suppose we need to be realistic about it as well and what you can actually do and can't do as a result of um, being overweight. Um, just simple things like people start the adoption process and then they say, by the way, we're moving house. And we're kind of like, oh, what? You're moving house? You know, let's try not to do too many major events, you know. <laughs> and uh, but so they move house like two weeks before the child's place. So really, that's not best. You know, if you're going to do any major house refurbishments or, you know, extend your house so that you've got five bedrooms, brilliant. But do it at the very, very early stage and be open and honest about it. Um, if you've got a pet, great. Pets can be really therapeutic, but we will have to undertake a pet assessment as well. And there's a health and, um, there's a health and safety assessment as well. Um, you will be asked about your finances. We're not expecting people to have lots of money, and you know, and we know that years and years ago, to be an adoptive parent, you had to be fairly affluent. You have to be able to, you know, provide for a child. Well, that's not what it's about. The reality is that children cost money and we don't want people who are in very difficult financial situations to be taken on an added stress. So we have to be open and honest about that as well. As an adoption agency, we view you as a resource for a child. Therefore, that we are asking you to stretch, we are asking you to consider children who are not zero to two. We're asking you to think about children who are a wee bit older. But again, just as I've spoken about Everyone has their limits. I mean, you need to seriously think about that. The home study assessment is the perfect platform for you to have those conversations with your social worker. Sometimes people come to the initial assessment and they say, we want to adopt five children. And we're like, oh, that's brilliant, that's great, you know. And actually, they're approved at panel for one, you know, because reality sets in. So it's lovely to have, you know, those aspirations. And, and it can change. It can be the opposite as well, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but it's just about being honest and realistic about what you can cope with. And lastly, with regards to work, um, we would be expecting you to take nine months off. Um, we just think it's very important that you're there and you're available for that child who's not had those good attachments or that good start in life. Um, so we'd be asking if you are part of a, a partnership or part of a couple, that one of you take at least your, your nine months off. And the next stage is, is that once your ad, um, adoption assessment is completed, dead straightforward, doesn't it? Really straightforward. <laughs> um, a manager will come out and verify the recommendation to the adoption panel, and then you will present yourself at the adoption agency's uh, adoption panel, and the decision uh, will be ratified by the decision maker. And then that's when you move on to start searching the linking and the matching for your child. All right, thank you very much. Uh, has anybody got any questions? No? Hope that was okay. All right, thanks very much.